Welcome back. If you've ever been to an auto show, then you know you're bound to see lots of concept cars. And while they're dazzling to look at, the truth of the matter is most of them will never see the light of day. But GM is about to change that trend. In fact, GM has 10 different concept vehicles currently making the rounds. And executives say eight of them could very possibly be built. Here's a look at just a few of our favorites. Take a close look at the Pontiac Piranha. Inspired by a camping tent, many of the surfaces consist of stretched fabric over a wire frame. Pontiac executives say they wanted to build something high performance, affordable, and fun. Something hip to appeal to the young. Some of the unique features, I think, are the, the, the manual operating sunroof. Again, it's inexpensive and it's uh, waterproof, open side to side. Uh, the instrument panel, um, inspired by sports tents. Fabric zips, zips on and off. Uh, you can use it, um, interchange it if you want. Uh, you can change colors. The door panels also zip on and off. You can uh, have exposed speakers and get to it without taking off the entire door panel. But the best thing about this car isn't the fact that the instrument panel can be unzipped if you'd like to customize the color. It isn't even the fact that it's easy to clean. All you have to do is hose it out. The best thing about the Pontiac Piranha is the price. If this vehicle were to be built, expected to sell for between 15 and 17 thou. And for 17 thou, you get a four-seat front-wheel drive coupe that offers a lot of utility. The seats are lightweight and removable to use on the beach. And in the rear, there's a cargo tub for ice. On the complete other end of the spectrum is the Cadillac Homage. Designed for people who are busy and need to be connected, it's a high-end flagship for both Cadillac and GM. Trying to keep uh, in mind uh, catering to each individual passenger, um, we wanted to offer them uh, ventilation and sunroof uh, specifically for each different passenger. So we're really trying to cater to the specific needs of each passenger, almost like a uh, first-class airlines, if you will. Other cool features include major reclining seats and a computer screen that slides right out of the glove box. Well, perhaps my favorite feature when it comes to the Cadillac Homage are these, the rear-view mirrors. And that's because they aren't rear-view mirrors at all. Instead, they're small video cameras. The cameras capture the image of whatever is on the outside of the car and then project that image inside onto a video screen. From luxury to performance, take a look at the Chevy SSR. Is it a car or a truck? Well, it's a crossover vehicle that consists of an open-air roadster with a pickup bed on the back. Uh, there are a lot of roadster owners. They enjoy their vehicles. But after they've lived with it for some time, you know, they have the frustration of not being able to carry a lot of things with them, carry their stuff with them. What makes this concept, this roadster, unique is that it has the great flexibility, the functionality in the rear portion of it. Now, while this car looks cool and it does have a major presence, the SSR isn't all about image. In fact, under the hood, it sports a 6-liter V8. Inside, the SSR has bench seats, and the shifter is integrated into the steering wheel for a very clean look. Another crossover concept vehicle by Chevy is the Traverse. It's a combination of a sport utility and a family sedan. Inside, the rear seat moves back and forth nine inches, depending on whether you're putting people or cargo in the back. The rear seat and the rear hatch also fold flat to allow for even more cargo space. Inside, the world's smallest laptop slides out of the instrument panel. And there's a convenient tray for backseat passengers, just as if you were traveling on a plane. This is a concept vehicle that we've put a lot of thought and effort into. And there's a lot of great attributes that you'll probably be seeing in the near future. Whether or not it's this vehicle, uh, as you see it today, that's to be seen. However, there's a lot of attributes and a lot of styling cues that will be appearing on future Chevrolets. 
Speaking of the future, take a look at the H2. The design has definite Hummer roots, but it's cleaned up and refined to provide maximum comfort and still be cool. You've got auxiliary lighting, you've got aggressive hooks here to tie ropes to, you've got winches, you've got other hooks. I mean, everything is about function in the vehicle and very authentic. And then you can move all up through the grill and there's hooks in the hood which are part of a Hummer brand queue. People don't recognize what they're about, but in the military they're actually dropping these things out of uh, transport planes. The biggest difference between this, the H2, and the original Hummer is all on the inside. The original Hummer is sparse. It's stripped down. All you have are the necessities. But in the H2, you can drive away in the lap of luxury. For example, the H2 comes covered in suede. The instrument panel is high-tech with push-button start. No need for an ignition key. It's different, to say the least, and this concept goes into production in about two years. It really is amazing, John, when you think about it, that GM says most of those vehicles will actually make it into production. They are so very funky. The SSR, for example, very different. GM has just announced that one for sure is going to go into production. Look for it in about 2002. So out of all of them, did you have a favorite? I did. You know, my favorite was the Piranha, the very first one that had the dash and the seats that zipped on and off. It's just so different. I think it was very creatively done. A real cheap car, real different and very interesting. Speaking of a great car, the Aussies have got...